Hello, everyone. Welcome, people of Earth, to Tableau Paint by Numbers. This is Glenn Kendall with Concourse Hosting, and today we're going to be looking at appeal performance and building out an appeal performance dashboard. Happy Groundhog Day. Apparently, uh, Puxitani Phil did see his shadow, so you know what that means. Actually, if he sees his shadow, then yes, that means six more weeks of winter. So I guess that also means if there's going to be six more weeks of winter that you're going to be holed up inside looking for something to do and uh, yeah, maybe sign up for more of our webinars and learn more about Tableau. Um, like Groundhog Day, this webinar is going to be, is being recorded right now. So we're going to post it on YouTube afterwards and you'll be able to live it over and over again as many times as you want. Um, the, the webinar today is going to be fairly technical. For those of you that have been on previous webinars, the content varies. But this particular series, the Paint by Number series, we get in and dive into the nitty gritty of build something in Tableau and we're also going to get in and do some SQL today. So if you're the kind of person that just kind of has this on in the background and you're multitasking doing your regular work, um, that's fine, but you might want to check back in and watch the recording later. But otherwise, I invite you to, you might want to, you know, pay attention because, um, again, it's technical and we're going to be going into a lot of detail on things. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with GoToMeeting, this is the control panel. You can hit the, uh, the minimize button if you want to see more of your screen. It's just that orange arrow at the top and pop it back out if you want to enter a question. Um, sometimes I do questions during the webinar. Sometimes I save them to the end. Today I'm going to try taking questions as we go because I think due to the technical nature of it, if you do see something that stumps you that you have a question about, um, feel free to go ahead and and uh, you know, ask a question as we go. Um, before we get into the building of the dashboard, I just want to talk a little about Tableau and what our service is here at Concourse Hosting. Um, for those of you that, that are just starting out with Tableau, you know, just realize that you're going to go through these different phases of Tableau adoption. So pretty much phase one is you're going to get Tableau desktop and you're just going to experiment with building things. You'll get a data export out of your system, whatever it is, so you have a data set to play with, and you'll play, and you'll build something. And eventually you'll get to the point where you're like, yay, I made something cool, now I want to share it with other people. And when you start to do that, it's, if it's just one or two workbooks that you're sharing, or just a dashboard, then the person you're sharing it with, you can give them something like Tableau Reader, which is a free product from Tableau that people can just view things that were built by someone else. Um, after a while, if you start building more things, you'll realize that this is a cumbersome process and not very efficient way to share what you build. So then the phase two is that you want to get Tableau Server. What's Tableau Server? Well, it's a place where you can publish all the things you build in Tableau Desktop and then easily share with other people. And the people that you're sharing it with don't need anything. They just click on a link and they log into Tableau Server or you can even embed credentials. They don't even have to log in if you don't want to, but uh, they can do it all through a web browser. And you can set up roles and permissions and all that stuff in Tableau Server and, and all of that. And the third one is the third phase is then, okay, after you do that sharing, it's like, okay, how do I get my data refreshed on a regular basis? Because you're going to realize I'm pulling data out of my database. I'm having to maybe massage it, do a few things with it, and then republish in order to reshare it. Wouldn't it be nice if that data refreshed automatically in the background? And that's where we come in. That's what we help with is the refresh piece. Um, okay. Appeal performance. So appeals in Razor's Edge are an interesting thing. Um, people use them in different ways. 
what we're going to be looking at specifically today, we're going to try to track these, these main things that I think probably regardless of how you're doing appeals, you should be able to at least track these things, the top three things, which is how much money did the appeal raise, what's the average gift, what's the median gift. We'll talk about the difference between those two and, and why you would want to track both. And the number of gifts and the number of donors. Now, some other things as you get more advanced that you would also want to track, which we're not going to be able to track today, and you'll see why, are response rate and whether or not the appeal is doing better or worse than last time. Um, in order for the response rate to work, your data in Razor's Edge, you need to be diligently tracking the constituent appeals, right, like who the appeals are going to. If you don't track that in there, if you don't, if there's not a ratio of, if you know, every time we're sending out an appeal, we're tracking that that appeal went out, you know, if the number of solicited is actually zero, you're not tracking that, you're not going to know what the response rate is. And we have a database that we'll be looking at today, and we'll take a look at that and see some of the values in there and see, you know, it's, it's probably not uncommon for a lot of your databases that you're not consistently tracking this. And then upgrade or downgrade. So ideally, you'd like to know over time, you know, how's our appeal doing? Like, are we doing better than last year? You know, that kind of thing. But to do that, you'd have to know, like, what appeal corresponds to another appeal, right? So appeal ID 721 this year is, you know, what appeal is that for the, from the previous year? And, and we'd have to find a way to know, okay, these are actually the same appeal that are going out to the same group of people. But there's no good way to track that in Razor's Edge. There's no default way to do that. So that's more of, you know, a one-off advanced thing. And so just along those lines, you know, what, what is an appeal? I mean, it can be any number of things, and people track these in different ways. So sometimes it just represents an effort of, say, a channel, like the annual fund, for example. So we're getting donations to the annual fund or through our newsletter. It happens year after year. Sometimes it's just a single marketing effort. Sometimes it's an event. Uh, something along those lines. Appeals, you know, can span days, weeks, months. I've seen appeals, you know, in people systems that span years. You probably don't want it to span years. I think the more refined your appeal is, the better you're going to be able to understand how appeals are performing. Because if it's all lumped into one bucket, how are you going to know, you know, how it is? It's, it's like. You're not tracking anything, really, if you do that. Um, also with appeals, there's packages, um, which are, you know, again, it's more of a, you know, a mailing or specific marketing effort tied to an appeal. So it's like an appeal within an appeal, if you will. And that's something you can use these same concepts we'll be going over today to track. Uh, we're not going to be looking at packages today, but, um, you know, that's just just another thing, again, if you, if you track that kind of stuff that you can do. Um, so this is the tables that we're going to be looking at in Razor's Edge. Gift table, gift split table, constituent appeals. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. So we're starting out. It's like, okay, how, how are we going to get at this data? Well, you can go into Razor's Edge. You can do an export, and you can get at some of this data in there, but constituent appeals not really easy to get to using export. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to dive right in and use SQL to query those tables. Okay. So you shouldn't be afraid of this. You should, as a budding Tableau builder, report person, database guru. Don't be afraid of getting into SQL and doing SQL queries and building things out. Um, this, tab this database here, Larry, is, um, is a Razor's Edge database. So here it is in all its glory, all these wonderful tables in here. 
what I'm going to do is um, I've made this other table in here, Glenn. And I have a couple of tables that I'm putting in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull data out of the Razor's Edge database, out of those tables I just talked about, and put it into there. So why would you want to do this? Why can't you just connect directly to the Razor's Edge database? Well, we want to refine what it is that we're looking at. In Razor's Edge, things are can be convoluted, spread all over the place. Um, the data may, you know, may not be in the most pristine form, shall we say. By putting it into another database, we can do some tweaking, some cleanup on it, and that sort of thing. And uh, we're making a little reporting database out of it. A uh, question someone asked, what if you have not previously used SQL? How would you access SQL in order to obtain data from RE? Um, you can, depends on the size of your database. So what I have going right here is I've installed SQL on my workstation. Now there's a free version of SQL from Microsoft called SQL Express. Um, you, if your database is 10 gigs or less, you can use SQL Express and it's free. Otherwise, you'll need to get you know, one of the paid versions of SQL. You might already have a license at your organization, so check with your IT. But you know, if you haven't used SQL before, now's a good time to dive in and, and start playing with it. And we're just going to be doing some real basic stuff here. Um, so to start out with, uh, I have a couple of tables that I'm making. So one table, I call it gift appeal. In this table is a gift ID, a gift amount, gift date, constituent ID, appeal ID. And I'm going to make a second table called constituent appeal, with just a constituent ID and the appeal ID. Uh, I already have these created, but I'm just going to execute this again, which basically drops the tables that were there, blows away all the data I had. So I'm we're starting from scratch here. There's nothing in these tables right now. So what are these tables going to do? Well, the gift appeal table is going to have the gifts. And the constituent appeal table is going to have appeals that were sent out to constituents that may have resulted in a gift, but a lot of them don't because, you know, your response rate is not 100%. Again, we're, we're this is only going to work in cases where you've been tracking this data. All right. So here's some, some SQL statements I, I put together ahead of time. And I'm just going to go over these and show you what I'm doing here. So this first statement is, I want to get all the gifts that happened last year. I want to get all the gifts from 2016. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert them into this new gift appeal table. And so here are the fields in here. I have gift ID, gift amount, gift date, constituent ID, everything except appeal ID. And that one can be null. I'm going to update it in a minute here. What I'm doing is I'm selecting those same values, the ID, the amount, the date, the constituent ID from the gift table. So this is the gift table in Razor's Edge, where the date is between these values. And then I put a couple other things in here as well. And the amount is greater than zero, because for some reason there are some gifts in there that are zero. And the constituent ID is not null. All right, we're going to run this. Execute. All right, so we got 13,300 uh, or 13,743 rows. That's how many gifts from 2016. All right. So the next step I'm going to do is I have to look up then uh, the appeal ID in a separate table. So the appeal ID is actually contained within the gift split table, not in the gift table. So what I'm doing in this statement here is I'm saying update 
this table that I just dumped all that data in, now update it, and put in the appeal ID associated with the gift ID that matches the gift ID from my table with that in the gift appeal table. So go ahead and run that. Now I got 13,702. Not the same number of rows, so there were some that it wasn't found. It wasn't able to find an ID for. It wasn't an appeal. So these are gifts with no appeal. They're unappealing gifts. We will delete them. See, this is another reason why you want to do this in a separate database, right? You can do this sort of thing. I only care about gifts with appeals because that's what we're looking at today. So let's just delete the ones that we don't care about. Boom, they're gone. Um, Gonna, I'm going to ask you a little question here. So what, what is the danger of what I just did here? I, I looked at the appeal ID in the gift split table. Is there a danger of what I just did there in terms of the, the I'm trying to associate what appeal those gifts came from and I'm looking in the gift, uh, the gift split table for that. Is, is there a danger in doing that? And the answer is, if you have a gift that is split amongst two appeals, this is only going to find the one that matches. Um, so if you're doing something crazy like that, you have a gift that's split amongst two appeals, uh, hopefully that's a rare case and we're just going to ignore it right now. Um, but just know that that is a possibility. Somebody asked, why do you utilize the gift split table to look at the appeal ID? Uh, because the appeal ID does not exist in the gift table. I have to get it from somewhere, so I get it from the gift split table. Just a, a fun quirk of Blackbaud. All right. Did I do this one yet? I don't think I did. Uh, so same thing here. I'm basically going to dump the data from constituent appeal. And what am I doing? I'm going to say, let's grab all the appeals, the distinct appeal IDs from my current gift table. So, so any of the appeals that exist now, I'm going to put them in this constituent appeal table. 313,000. Um, again, this only, this is only going to matter for those appeals that you're actually tracking the constituent appeals for. So what that means is, like I send appeal out to, you know, 20,000 people. I, if I'm tracking that I sent that appeal out to 20,000 people, it'll show up in this table, this constituent appeal table. If I'm not tracking it, then what will happen is I just get gifts that magically appear in the appeals, you know, with an associated appeal, but there's there might not be any, you know, people solicited with that. So if you're not tracking that, you're not going to be able to know like what your response rate is for that kind of thing. Um, okay, we're going to go switch over to Tableau here, but before I do that, does anyone have any questions about what I'm doing? So this is like a mini data warehouse, right? And when I don't leave, I don't like to use the term data warehouse and call it a reporting database or something like that. But it's it's the same concept. Uh, I don't like to use the term data warehouse because when people hear data warehouse, they think, oh, it's this big complex thing and it's expensive and complicated and I can't do it. So you know, this is just two tables. It's really simple. It's a it's a data bento box. It's not a data warehouse. Just a little consumable bit of information that's very specific to what it is that we're working on. Um, I have saved these files. So this file of my data bento box, right, my, my, my database and my tables and all my queries, I'll send these to you afterwards just so you can have them as a reference. Okay, hopefully everyone's following along here. We're only getting questions from one person. Boom. Here we go. 
Tableau. All right, so when you launch Tableau, you can, they want you to connect to something. Let's say connect to Microsoft SQL Server. If you're connecting to a server that's on the same system that you're on, you can just put the character dot. That means this server. Databases Glenn, I'm going to use Windows authentication because I'm already set up in SQL. As a sysadmin, I have full rights. Sign in. Okay, there it is. There's my database. I could connect to Larry, but I don't want to. Here's my two tables. So what you do is you drag the table over here. As soon as you do that, you have your option up here, connection. You can do live or extract. We're going to leave it on live for now. You'll see what the difference is between the two in a little bit. I can hit update. It shows me some of the data. All right. Now I'm going to hop over to worksheet. So in Tableau here, things are broken down into dimensions and measures. Dimensions are IDs and categories of things. Measures are numbers and amounts and totals. We're going to start with looking at um, the amount of money that was brought in for all of our gifts. Again, we're looking at gifts in 2016. So when I drag this up here, it automatically does a sum. It just assumes I'm going to want to know the total. And then I'm going to look at it by appeal. So we're looking at appeal performance. So I'm just looking at the ID. This is the database ID. So you know, you'd probably want to look at something more descriptive. In your particular case, I'm doing that because this is real data and I don't I want to obscure whose data it is that we're working on. So ID it is. Uh, so what's happening here? Well, this is a breakdown of how much money each appeal brought in. I can just mouse over each one. I see, oh, appeal ID 535 brought in a million bucks. Cool, whatever. You know, I've got a breakdown of all this stuff here. Um, really, though, you can get to a situation where you just have so many appeals that it becomes a little bit unwieldy to try to figure out which ones you're interested in looking at. So we want a way to sort this and really look at like what are our top appeals. Let's say our top five appeals or top ten appeals. That's where most of our money is coming from. Like we want to know the KPI on those and see how those are doing. Okay. So what I can do here is I can go over to Tableau and I can hit this drop down and I can say sort. And now I'm going to sort by a different field. I'm going to sort actually by the gift amount. Descending. Descending means bigger on top. All right. So now we've done this. Now we're sorting by descending. We can see the biggest ones are on the top there and going all the way down. Cool. Um, another interesting thing I might want to do is look at what percentage of the total this represents. So I'm going to pull my gift amount over here to tooltip. And I'm going to change it. I can do a quick table calculation. All this cool stuff is just built right into Tableau. It's awesome. I can say percent of total. Now when I go here, I can mouse over this, I see Appeal 973, 12% of our money in 2016 came from Appeal 973 for a million dollars and on down the line. So these two together, that's like 24%, add another 11%. So probably I want to look at the top 10 of these. So is there a way I can filter this to just look at the top 10? Uh, to do that, I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call it Top Appeals. Did I spell appeals right? Kind of dyslexic, so index. So this is a built-in function, returns the index of the current row.
Uh, someone said, are all those interactive features in Tableau Reader? No, they are not. You'll want to use Tableau Public. Tableau Reader is just for reading. Tableau Desktop is for building. All the stuff we're doing now is available on Tableau Desktop. There, you know, Tableau Desktop costs money. If you want to play and do something, you know, figure out how this works, but for free, Tableau has a product called Tableau Public, where they have a Tableau server that's only everything you publish on there, everyone in the world can see. And then, but there's a desktop version of Tableau Desktop that works only with Tableau Public. Public, so get that, and then. Um, and then you can play with this stuff for free. Uh, how did you access the calculated field index window? Uh, I went up here. There's this little drop down here, and I said create a calculated field. So that's that's how you do that. Yeah, so this little symbol here, it's kind of hard to see, means it's calculated. This, this value here is calculated. All right. Uh, I'm going to drag this over here. Actually, what I need to do here is I need to change this. Um, change this to discrete. When I do that, so there's different values. There's, there's, there's different kinds of values or different categories, I guess. So, so the green means it's continuous and the blue means it's discrete. So I'm going to make this discrete because I'm only interested in the rank, how it ranks. Um, so these, this is my rank now, 1, 2, all the way down. So I got 1 through 35. Um, now I want to find a way to filter on this. So I'm only going to show the top appeals by a value that I choose. So I'm going to um, pull this down here to detail. And then actually going to convert it back to continuous. And then I'm going to move it up here as a filter. And then it asks me <clears throat> what are the range of values that I want to do. And I want to do the top 10. There it is. So these are my top 10 appeals by gift amount. I'm going to rename this sheet. Top appeals by money. OK. What are some other things I could look at in, you know, instead of looking at the amount of money, I could look at I could do the same thing. I'm going to duplicate this now. So if I do, if you just click on the worksheet and say duplicate, it makes a new worksheet. Everything's duplicated. Um, in this case, instead of looking at money, I'm going to look at something else. How about the number of records, the number of gifts? What if we do that? And I have to change my sort. Sort by not gift amount, number of records. OK. So now, the previous one, I was looking at what are my top appeals based on dollars in the door. This one, I'm looking at appeals based on how many actual gifts we got. Why would you want to do this? Um, these are probably actually more the appeals we would want to look at. What happens a lot of times is under these appeals, as we'll see in a little bit here, these appeals can be deceiving because these could actually be, you know, major gifts. There could be an appeal set up that's just like a placeholder for major gifts. And so it could be that it actually went out to a, a small number of people you know, where it's actually an appeal that went to like 10 people or 50 people or something like that, and then it brought in a million dollars, you know. So you can't really, you know, 
there's nothing to track there performance wise. It was just more like a placeholder. Whereas with these, this is more, you know, you can track the performance of stuff like this because we're we're dealing with a statistically significant number of records. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. We're going to rename the sheet here. Top appeals by number. Okay. Um, any questions about this? I'm going to move on to another section here. We can always come back to this. So what I'm going to start to do is now I've, I've started to got, get some pieces in place for building out my dashboard. So now I want to get some more of my KPI metrics and whatnot so I can, so I can build out my dashboard. Okay. So click on the sheet below, get a brand new worksheet. So starting from scratch here again. Um, in this case, I'm going to look at gift amount. I'm just going to drag it up here to the text field. So this is the gifts across all of, so this is the amount of money that came in from all the gifts from 2016. Um, what I want to do is I want to look at these by appeal. Right? I want to look at my top appeals. Then I want to be able to click through these appeals and say, how much did this one do? How much did that one do? How much did that one do? So I'm going to sort by the appeal. I'm going to actually filter by the appeal ID. So let's just pick one here. 1086 is an appeal ID. Da -da. 1086, where are you? There it is. Okay. So now I'm, I can see that this appeal brought in this amount of money. I'm going to format this. Change the font because Century Gothic is where it's at today. And we're going to make it big. Uh, let's make it currency. Let's not look at pennies. Do that. All right, we'll give that a whirl. Someone has a question. Can you add the goal for each appeal so we can tell if the results are any good? Sure, you can add a goal. I think part of the problem is, is that those you know, are those tracked consistently within Razor's Edge? You know, if they are, then yeah, you can throw that in there. Otherwise, we can just, you know, that might be something we have to add ourselves. Either add to the database or here in Tableau, we can throw in a number for a goal. So, yeah, I mean, you can do any of those kinds of things. But ideally, what you want to do is have your data in the state so that the data is going to just do the work for you. You don't have to manually create all of these special things. You want to just be able to pull it out of the database. Um, rename sheet. Dollars. Okay. Duplicate. We're going to do the same thing, but instead of gift amount, we're going to do number of gifts. So I can remove this. So I'm doing a sum now. What if I did a count? That works, except I'm formatting it wrong. He it thinks it's money. As I told it was money, it's just a number. So because I have one table, the count of any column here, I can count any column and I'm going to get the same result. I can count ID, I can count the gift amount, I'm counting the number of records. So that's how I got to this value. I think. Yeah, that works because it's just this, this appeal ID. If I were to get rid of this filter, we will get the total number of gifts. So we have, this is the count, the number of gifts for this guy. Gifts. Okay. Next. 
we're going to do donors. How do we do that? Oh, I want to duplicate. Duplicate. Okay. Donors. Um, can't do gift amount. Get rid of that guy. Constituent ID. Dragging this to the text box here. Text means just throw some text up. All right. So there's a, there's all the constituent IDs. People that gave us gifts. We want to count the distinct ones. These are the donors. The number of distinct donors, constituents, that gave us money in 2016 for this appeal. Why doesn't it keep the formatting? That would be cool if it did, but it's not. All right, so this is donors, rename sheet, donors. All right. No, nope. keep doing that. Um, dollars. Let's duplicate dollars. Now we're going to look at different value. Let's say we're looking at total money. How about average? Average gift. Boom. Duplicate. Instead of average, now I want to do median. It won't let me. It won't let me do median. It says it requires an extract. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Hi, Glenn. Is there a Canadian RE sample out there when I build Tableau dashboards that I can link to fake data when showing people outside? Hmm. I don't know of a Canadian RE sample out there. Um, I can send you a link. We'll have Holly here who's sort of monitoring the webinar info. Um, get your information and I can send you get send you more information about it. Blackboard sample RE database. Um, Yeah, I mean, if you're just playing with things, Canadian eyes, what difference does it make? It's just Canadian dollars versus U.S. dollars. I mean, it's really the same thing. Here in Tableau, it doesn't care with the postal code, not the zip for mapping. Hmm, that's a separate topic. We're going to do mapping in a few weeks, so we, we can go into mapping stuff. That's a great question with, with mapping. Um, yeah, we'll cover mapping including mapping in Canada. Stay tuned. That will be another thing that we'll do in an upcoming webinar. Uh, okay, so where was I? Median. I was trying to do a median. Median, it can't do it from the live database. Tableau says, build me an extract instead. So what a Tableau extract is, is it pulls all the data out and it puts it in, in its special Tableau friendly format and um, it can, you know, do analysis and whatnot on it, sort of in memory. So I have to create the extract first. So I, so instead of live, I switch over here to extract. Then I have to save it. Uh, I'm going to first save my workbook. Uh, I'll call this one appeal performance. The real deal. To save the workbook, you must either create an extract or click cancel and use a live connection. Create extract. So it wants to create an extract, give it a name. It's just a file where it's, where it's sucking all that data into. All right, extract made. I update this. I mean, it's not changing what the data is. It's just how it's analyzing it. Now I go back to here. Instead of this, now I do median. 
Does everyone know the difference between median and average gift? Uh, it's important. Um, I'll go ahead and rename this one median gift while I'm thinking of it here. It's an important distinction, and, and you really need to track both, I think. Um, or if, if you just track one, track median. Average gift is the average, you know, so we're summing up all the money and dividing by the total number of gifts. The problem with that is that if you have outliers, if you have really small gifts or really large gifts that aren't typical of the sample set, it's going to skew the results. So typically it's a major gift. Everyone gave, you know, 100 bucks or 20 bucks, except for this one guy that gave 5,000 bucks. That's going to really skew the result. You're going to think, wow, everyone's giving this amount. No, actually they're not. One person did, that's an outlier, and it skewed the data. Median gift takes care of that. Median gift actually looks at the number of values that you have. So you have 1,000 gifts. It's going to look at the 500th gift. Say, if we just line them up from smallest to biggest, one person gave $5, one person gave $10, another person gave $10, $10, all the way, I'll just line up all 1,000 gifts, smallest to biggest, just grab the one that's actually in the middle, and that's the median gift. It's the one that's most typical. It's in the center of the bell curve. It's the one that most people did. So that's a really important thing to track for appeals. Okay, we got all sorts of great numbers here. Let's see if we can throw this in the dashboard. Do something cool with it. New dashboard. So we down here in Tableau, we can say new worksheet or new dashboard. New story is like a collection of dashboards, kind of like a PowerPoint. Um, all right, so I hit new dashboard. As soon as I do that, all of the sheets I created appear over here on the left. And it's inviting me to drag and drop it over into the dashboard. So that's what a dashboard really is. It's a collection of worksheets. And you can link them together in the dashboard. So when you click on one, something happens in the others. All right, here I go. I'm going to start dragging. Uh, so I just drug top appeals by dollar amount into my dashboard. And let's drag in some other numbers here. Let's do the dollars. Let's do average gift. See, it's, you can do it vertical, horizontal. I'm not really putting a lot of thought into this. I'm just kind of dragging these over. There are uh, additional things that you can create. You can create um, containers that you can put the sheets into as well to provide another layer of, of control and formatting. I'm just not worried about that right now. I'm just throwing them over here. Um, so basically, you're going to put our money across the top, and then we'll look at, at gifts and donors uh, over here somehow. Oh, do too weird formatting. All right, whatever. We'll just leave it like that. Um, all right, so here's the basics of my dashboard. The problem is that these sheets that I have over here we're hard-coded to use appeal ID 1086. So this actually doesn't represent reality. It's just hard-coded to that thing. So to make these link together, what you do is you click on this worksheet in the dashboard, and then click on this little funnel thing here. It's a highly technical term of funnel thing. And you say, use funnel thing as filter. So now what it's going to do is this filter that I've chosen to apply, it's going to uh, use this as the filter instead. So now when I click on 973, everything else updates. And my formatting is wonky. Um, you know, whatever. This is just formatting, so we're not going to worry about that part of it. But you, know, you get the idea. You can move stuff around here. So there's my appeal. Um, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, right? So 
we got 13 gifts with seven donors. And how was this appeal performance? Well, the average gift was 81 grand. So this is probably, you know, a major gift placeholder. This isn't traditionally what we would think of as an appeal because it went out to a statistically insignificant number of people. Still significant, and you know, whatever, you may want to track this. This one's better. See, without that other table, that constituent appeals table, we don't know how many people these went out to. We don't know what our response rate is. I can just maybe guess, yeah, if it's 10%, then this went out to 3,000 people, or 5%, it went out to 7,000 or 8,000 people, something like that. If I can just click through here, get a sense of how these different guys did. Or if I click off, boom, that's the total amount. Remember this amount from the beginning? This is now with no filters. Here's with all the appeals, all the money from all the different appeals. This is what we saw. Okay. Then we can duplicate this dashboard. I can say duplicate. And instead of this guy, I can use appeal by number. Down you go, down there somewhere. This up. And use this as filter. Use as filter. Okay, this is more of what we're looking for here. You're talking about appeal and appeal performance. This is the kind of thing that we're really looking for to say, okay, this appeal, whatever it is, 1086, is a st statistically significant number of people. And this is the kind of thing that if we knew what 1086 was year to year, we could analyze that same appeal and see what its performance is from year to year. and on down the line here. See this one, kind of similar. There's these, you know, it's going out to a different group of people. So, so you kind of, you need context on this to be able to know like what, how are these, what are these appeals and, and what are our expectations, like somebody said earlier, having a goal associated with it. So that would be probably back in that table there, we would have a goal but then again, is your goal going to be a dollar goal? Is it going to be a participation goal? You know, what kind of goal is it going to be? And there's different things that you can look at with that. Um, all right. We are going to try one more thing here because we have a few more minutes. Does anyone have any questions about this? Hopefully this was, was fairly straightforward. Uh, we're going to go back to our data source here. And at the risk of blowing everything up, we're going to pull in constituent appeal. And the minute I pull in a second table, it wants to join them together. So I have to choose what I want to join them on. Now that you kind of get into the weeds of, the, of SQL and how tables work and, and database you know, relations, join relations. So in this case, gift appeal are the gifts, and these are all the people that it went out to. So there's going to be a bigger set. So we'll do a right join. We could do a full outer join as well, but we'll do a right join. So there's going to be, we're going to say constituent ID and appeal ID need to exist in this other table. Now the problem is, as soon as I do this, it's going to break a lot of the stuff that I made. Um, it's not going to break it, but it's going to it's going to change the values associated with it. Um, what I wanted to do was was to be able to show you response rate in this particular case. So let's make a new worksheet, and then let's just first of all see what it did for our number of records. I'll drag this up here. So we have, 
um, 314,000 records between the two. And then what about the number of gifts? count the number of gifts. So before we had 13,000 gifts, now we only have not even 2,000 gifts. Why did this happen? Where did all the gifts go? The problem is because I'm trying to see who we sent appeals out to and match that with the gifts that came in. The problem is 10,000 of the gifts that came in, we don't know who it went out to. We're not tracking that in this database. So this is the subset of the 3,000, 29, 26, that we did happen to track that for. Okay, so in this case, how will we, can we track another number in here uh, for this particular people? Maybe we want to look at the response rate. How do we get the response rate? Well, let's do, let's calculate, uh, create a calculated field. Response rate. Uh, and I'm cheating here, so I don't want to have to think about what the response rate is. So I know it's going to be the number of gifts that I got divided by the number of people I sent it out to. So I'll just start with this. That's the number of gifts that I got. And then the number of people I sent it out to. Put that up there too. Uh, not the sum. Count. Edit in shelf. When I say edit in shelf, this is like, this is the actual value that Tableau is using. Then go over here to response rate, edit this again. Uh, nope, I just did the same thing. Not what I wanted. Or, oop -a -doop. Response rate, drag this up here. Okay, let's get rid of these other two guys. Bye bye. So here's our response rate across the board. Format. And you are a percentage type number. Mm. Maybe look back at one of these appeals. Now we have appeals. No. 11.23. What if we look at just the appeals? For 11.23. 100% response rate, so, well, <laughs> anyway, this is something that, that you can play around with in there. Um, yeah, it's, it's trickier because unless you have a good correlation between um, the number of gifts that you got and then you're actually tracking the appeals that went out in the constituent appeals table, um, it's going to going to be tricky for you to, to be able to come up with a good number there. So really the, the, the concept is that you're going to just narrow it down so okay what appeals are we tracking this for and then and then you know just focus in on those particular appeals. Um, but here's a couple of good dashboards that are certainly a good way to get started just looking at appeals. You know this is something we just threw together here. Uh, pulling data directly out of Razor's Edge, starting at zero, pulling it into another table, and then building this out in an hour. We did this. All right. Any more questions? I'm going to hang on the line here for a few more minutes.
and take any more questions you might have. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope this was useful. I hope it wasn't you know, too detailed for you. Um, if it was, I invite you to watch it again and you know, pause it and replay those parts that, that were maybe a little bit too detailed or confusing. But you know, just using this kind of stuff, hopefully you can get in and start doing some cool things right away with Tableau. Do you do these every week? Yes, I do. Um, we're doing these at the same time every week. It varies depending on the content of it. We have this particular series is called Paint by Numbers. So if you see a Paint by Numbers webinar, that's what this is. This is going to be getting in the weeds and building something in Tableau. Uh, we have another one that's uh, on what we call Center of Enablement. It's what actually Tableau calls it. And that talks about user adoption and strategies around rolling out Tableau in your organization. And then sometimes we have guest speakers. Um, so you know that'll be a special special thing as well. But but yeah, the, the main focus really probably two out of three or you know half the webinars that we do are going to be along this line of showing you how Tableau works by by just jumping in and building stuff. to my data source and remove this I don't like what it did to my data. Let me refresh. Did I update? Okay. Um, again, thank you guys for attending today. If there's no more questions, I'm going to stay on the line here just for another minute or so until, uh, until 12 o'clock. If any more questions pop in, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Go ahead and, and shoot a question over. And like I said, we'll send out those SQL queries, and you know, we can even send out this, this Tableau workbook as well. Okay, everyone, enjoy your Groundhog Day. Thanks again. Could you please update my email address? Okay, we will do that. Going once, going twice. 